So we gonna start pretty much where I left off. I, I, I am so glad that you guys found that the last video that I did, um, who, who was wrong or who was at wrong? Was it the cop? Was it the, uh, was it the uh, driver? And many of you agree with me that the, the driver was, was in the wrong. He should have just went on here and, and just, you know, just put it in PC and left and just roll out into the sunset and he wouldn't even have to worry about it. When they came over to ask him the first time and say, yo, brother, man, you're going to have to move. You're, you know, the lot's full and we're going to have to ask you to leave. Number one is private property, bro. You're going to have to. No matter if you're out of hours or not, if they don't want you on your prop, you see, here's the thing with some of these drivers. They think that these trucking, uh, these these truck stops owes us something, and they don't. That's why the truck stops do what they do. Like, I know we could complain about, you know, being taxed for parking in their reserved parking spot, but again it is private property and they can do what they want to do that's the thing that's the beauty of being a private owner you can pretty much do what you want to do if you don't want nobody on your property you got the right to tell them to leave regardless if they can't move or they want state trooper to come over and and give them authorizations to move. Bruh, you're gonna have to move. Period. Period. You don't own the spot. It's like it, it's like somebody sitting in your house and you ask them politely to move or to get out. They're gonna turn around and tell you, yo, we we can't go nowhere because of FMCSA rules. We we gonna have to sit right here in your kitchen for the full ten hours, brother man. You gotta get the <laughs> up, up, up my house, yo. You gotta go. Uh, I can't wait for no ten hours to for you to leave. <laughs> so I mean, you wouldn't want nobody to do that to you in uh, in your house or on your property, right? Ryan Little. <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? Locked Out Man back again with another commentary for you. Yo, if you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, hit that bell and that all button. I really do appreciate it. You know, maybe if you was to share this out to somebody that might be interested, I am Locked Out Man and I cater to new drivers, new drivers that's coming into the industry, drivers that are interested in uh, in driving trucks, and they type in my name, Lockout Men, and they see that I do come with content that caters to them. We do we do the calls, we talk to we talk to drivers, we do the pull ups, and all that good stuff. And I and I just cater to you guys. So hopefully, if you a new driver that come across uh, my channel and you find it value. Go ahead and subscribe to it and share it to your other people. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they might get something out of it as well. So, of course, my commentary is like every, you know, every night, every other night or whenever I feel like setting everything up and go ahead and talk about my thoughts about uh, the things that's happened in a day. Well, let's start off with this little tidbit. Um, a couple of trucking companies, I believe Warner has uh, made an acquisition of of taking another trucking company off somebody's hands. And they're kind of like my, it's, it's not migration yet, but it probably might take about six or seven months to migrate everything into one. It's a Pennsylvania company. I'm not sure what it is. Also, your company, Knight Swift, they uh, they made an acquisition for AAA Cooper. So if you guys work for them, know that you guys are now working for Swift Knight. 
So a lot of you guys don't understand that some of these trucking companies are owned up under one conglomerate. So uh, I know for a fact that Abilene is part of the Night Swift uh, Corporation. Uh, Covenant and a couple of other trucking companies is up under their umbrella. Uh, U.S. Express, Variant, uh, Mississippi uh, Total is up under one umbrella. Uh, JNR Schwugel and Super Service are up under one umbrella. Make sure, again, when you come in and you find out, you know, find all these companies that you might be interested in, make sure you do your due diligence to find out if they are uh, either under one umbrella or their sister companies or whatever the case. Because if you come in from one company to jump onto another company, it might still be owned by that same company. So you're really not going nowhere. Of course, I found this post on Facebook and it's an interesting post and I thought I would share it with you guys this evening. Here it goes. It starts off. I will just, I like to just give a word of advice. I had my CDLs for 24 years. I've been in a position as a driver, a dispatcher, a road supervisor, and an accident investigator. When you get into an accident, please do not post on social media. That is some good fucking advice because the first thing that you guys do the very first thing you guys do, especially if the if you think the accident isn't your fault, you quit to grab your cell phone and you quit to go on, you know, either go live or record. And you 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 want to document via live what uh, what happened. See, here's the thing. You putting it out there. And it's nothing that you can do or say about it because it's already documented. It's on video and it's over the Internet. Anybody can find it, whether you put it up on Facebook, YouTube or anything like that. Trust me, an investigator, lawyer, investigator with money for IT people that can hack into your Facebook and find out what was said about said accident. It is just best just to use your camera phone, document the um, the accident, and then just leave it like that. Take it to your lawyer, so you you can so y'all can have some evidence of what happened. Then after court, after all said and done, then you can post it online. So whether you're in an accident in a truck or in an accident in your four wheeler, this is some good advice. You, 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 you need to listen. You need to listen. All right. Do not make videos while you're in shock telling what, what you felt, what you feel, what happened. Okay. Example saying things like, Hmm, I was just on my phone talking and the car just stopped in front of me. Think about what you just said. I was on my phone talking and the car that you didn't pay attention to stopped in front of you. Or, or how about this? I thought I could beat the storm. I didn't think the snowstorm or rain would come that fast. Now you jackknife or slid into a pile, into a pile up, or off the side of the road, into a ditch. You shouldn't, you should have been driving, a, uh, uh, you should have been driving for the weather conditions. If it's a snowstorm, if it's raining hard, windy, you should slow that bad boy down. Slow it down. Now I know sometimes, some, sometimes things happen but if you're trying if if you're trying to outrun the storm that's you you're at fault and you said it yourself on the video that you put out there think about that the moment you say that on social media it is deemed your fault period you mention anything you mention anything on social media pertaining to an accident 
they're going to automatically say it's your fault. You are either considered a distractive driver or you made a poor uh, or you made a poor choice while operating a commercial vehicle. They got that information from you because you put it out there out of your mouth because you put it out there off your post that you put up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter or TikTok. Don't forget to subscribe to me on TikTok. Stay off the phone, man. Stay off the phone, even if it's hands free. All right. If even if it's hands free, you got your phone, hang, you know, pop, popped up on the, popped up on your windshield, on your magnet mount. Stay, just stay off of it. Don't, don't fidget around with the buttons. Fidget around, scrolling up and down. Stay off your phone, man. All right, uh, and while while we're on the subject of staying off your phone, okay, while while we're on that subject, stay off the Qualcomm units. We we know that the dispatchers and people from your company send you messages every day, all day via text, via text message. Don't fiddle with that. Don't fiddle with that. You know, if you get a chance to pull over and, and, and see what was said, nine times out of ten, you know what I'm saying, you, you, you could pull over off the road. But you can't even do that, though, because if it's not an emergency and you pull off on the side of the road, you can't even use, officer, I just pulled off on the side of the road so I can make a phone call. Well, you know, uh, you can't do that. You can't pull off on the side of the shoulder no more. You have to you have to actually go up to the exit, find your find a safe spot, uh, a rest area, or pull off the highway on the on the off ramp. Anytime you pull over on the shoulder, and if it's not for an emergency purpose, and and what and I guess what they mean by emergency purposes is that the truck actually broke down. They don't care if the if the trust not broke down and you tell them, yo, I'm I'm on the phone or whatever, whatever, they they still gonna be like, no, nah, you 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 gotta move on. And in some states, they actually give you a ticket. So I'm just saying. But again, for the phone, don't fidget with the phones. Okay, don't don't fidget with the phones and don't fidget with the Sam the Qualcomms, or even text because while your company is sending you messages throughout the day, right? And I mean, they send you messages throughout the day and and you drive, guess what? If you get into an accident, the accident is gonna be your fault. You can't turn around and say, hey, you know, my company sent me a text and you know, I had to read it and then boom, you're in an accident. They going to turn around and be like, well, it's not our fault. You was the one that was in command of the truck. You shouldn't have been, you know, reading the text while you're driving. It's on you, not the company. The company ain't had nothing to do. We had not, they, they going to stand fast. We ain't had nothing to do with him. You know, he should have just waited. It's, it wasn't that important. Only you gonna get the points on your license and your and only you gonna get the issues on your DAC report. So take the take the advice of this old schooler right here and the advice that I have for you as well. Number one, stay off the phone. Again, whether it's hands free or something like that, make sure you like it. I know it's kind of hard to do, but make sure you set everything up prior to, you know, prior to getting ready to go. Same thing with your GPS. Don't don't fidget with your GPS. You should already have your GPS set. You should already have the coordinates input it. GPS should already be ready to go. If you like me, I have multiple GPSs. I got my I got my I got my Google Maps on my tablet. I have another Google I have a Google Navigations on the on on my phone that just have Wi-Fi. 
and I have a and I have a Ram and Nally. I also have my I have my iPad strapped to the strapped to the uh, to the dashboard and all like that. So I set my music my playlist up. Luckily for me, I'm in a truck that you can just push the button on the on the steering wheel to change tracks. I put my phone up on the on the magnet mount and make sure that my Sam Sarah is all good and boom we ready to roll so just uh just take my advice uh and old school advice don't mess with nothing man because if you get into an accident or anything like that company gonna automatically say yo it's your fault bro and then if you do get into an accident whether you're in your car or in a truck don't don't post it on social media I, I know you guys is quick to post it on social media. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Don't post it on social media. Leave social media alone because their lawyers will find it and they will use it against you. They will use it against you. So your best bet is to just get gather all the information up that you need. Pictures, videos, uh, information from you know from the driver and stuff like that make sure you get all of that all right and hold on to it give it to your lawyer hold on to it let it let it stay the course you know found not guilty of uh of not causing the accident or whatever whatever and then what afterwards all right after it's all said and done then you can come on Facebook and be like, well, you know, I was in this accident, you know, two, three, four, mo four months ago, and I like to share it with you guys now. Don't do it while it's, while it's being proceeding, all right? All right, that's going to do it for the Lockout Men podcast show. I am your host, Lockout Men. Thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thank you for, um, for support. If you guys like to support the show, yo, join the channel, man. Hook a brother up with some coffee. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, hit that bell and that all button. And I will come back at you guys with another video. Y'all take it easy. Stay safe. Peace. Brian Little. <laughs>